As of uh, 2019, um, uh, of the total exports, uh, about uh, 89% uh, were uh, min minerals uh, products uh, and you know, commodities, and um, uh, and uh, non-minerals uh, accounted for about 10.8%. Uh, uh, and uh, we have had uh, the exact same pattern uh, for the past 10 years, and about 70% uh, uh, of uh, FDI goes into uh, mineral sector as well. Uh, so similar picture there. And for the non-minerals uh, products, so we have textile, meat, uh, and um, uh, plant origin uh, products. And uh, about 80% uh, of our uh, trade turnover is uh, with uh, two of uh, two uh, uh, main neighbors. Uh, and um, and uh, our um, uh, wise minister has emphasized that the future actions uh, in trade facilitation and promotion of exports um, and uh, promoting access to finance for uh, SMEs and uh, diversifying uh, export uh, uh, business uh, uh, services and uh, cluster development uh, as part of the government uh, efforts uh, and uh, free trade uh, agreement negotiation and uh, opening up uh, new uh, markets. Um, uh, you know, these are the uh, the areas uh, uh, where the government is uh, making more efforts. Now, I would like to invite the next speaker, um, uh, MFAs, um, an investment research um, um, uh, uh, director, and Kang uh, Hoik. His name is Kang Hoik. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me uh, to um, uh, make a presentation. Let me take off my uh, mask. Um, and uh, first today, um, I would like to uh, uh, give you an overview of uh, Mongolia's foreign trade and uh, and what are the barriers um, and in particular uh, the uh, the the seamless uh, transportation and movements of um, uh, freights and uh, goods uh, and so what the government has taken in recent years uh, in this regard uh, as you know Mongolia is a landlocked country and we neighbor with um, uh, PRC and Russia we have a long um, border uh, with the two countries uh, and um, so we can reach to seaport uh, through these uh, two neighbors um, and uh, about 90% of the uh, movement of goods uh, uh, go uh, through uh, through the sea uh, and uh, for the remainder 10 uh, we have railroad and um, also um, uh, on roads and um, as well as airline and, um, and so Mm, only 10 percent um it's um now why uh, because uh uh sea transport is um uh, is uh, the the cheapest and the most scalable way of uh, transport goods um but uh, for us um, we have uh, no access to uh, see uh, directly and uh, therefore we face uh, uh, unique challenges um, um, exclusive to landlocked uh, countries uh, however um, in accordance uh, with uh, the uh, UN conventions uh, uh, we have uh, the freedom to access seaports um, uh, through our neighbors um, and um, uh, so multilateral agreements uh, uh, guarantee this right and um, in uh, 90 91 and 1992 uh, we uh, actually uh, reinforced our rights uh, to use um, uh, seaports in China and Russia um, and we um, negotiated the agreements uh, with them and um, so um, we have uh, such a right, um, but uh, despite that um, about 30% uh, of uh, our uh, our total uh, and, uh, good, uh, that, and, uh, we have about uh, 30% more uh, costs uh, that we uh, have to um, uh, bear um, because uh, we have to transit through uh, our uh, neighbors uh, to access uh, sea. So in other words, there is additional 30% um, transport cost uh, leading up uh, to the seaport and that's our trade barrier. And um, for the uh, landlocked countries, uh, this um, uh, particular uh, 
uh, challenge uh, is um, uh, being addressed, um, especially through uh, UN. And uh, so this uh, international uh, um, uh, intergovernmental uh, agreement on dry port uh, was uh, uh, adopted uh, and uh, Mongolia joined uh, this uh, instrument in 2016. And uh, uh, we now have uh, the legal basis uh, to expand our cooperation in this area. So uh, could you please move to the next slide? And um, so uh, after Mongolia joined this um, uh, dry port agreement, um, the national working group uh, headed by Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, was established in 2018. Um, and uh, the main uh, task for this um, uh, 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 for this uh, um, uh, structure is uh, to really uh, create a domestic uh, legislative framework and also to uh, negotiate uh, with the uh, neighboring countries. Um, and uh, this uh, working group um, is uh, headed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And uh, then uh, we have members from the various line ministries and government agencies. Oh, could you move to the next slide, please? Um, and mm, the, this um, uh, UNESCAP um, dry port agreement uh, mm, mm, is uh, um, also uh, covering our two neighbors because uh, Russia and China are signatory to this uh, uh, to this uh, agreement and. Um, uh, um, so uh, uh, Tianjin port is uh, the uh, closest port to Mongolia, about uh, 1,100 uh, uh, kilometers. And also we have a uh, few ports in Russia that we can uh, use and uh, buy. Uh, so what are the advantages of this um, agreement in, uh, and what are the benefits? Uh, well, uh, that is uh, studied by this uh, working group. Um, and uh, this uh, dry port, uh, as you can see, uh, how does it, you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, seaports, uh, you know, what does it mean? Well, uh, just to tell you a, a brief uh, history, um, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, um, and Korean um, seaports, um, uh, or uh, the um, uh, seaport at large um, uh, has uh, the main uh, function of loading and unloading uh, the uh, goods uh, that are being uh, transported uh, through sea. And, um, um, and, uh, but however, in recent years, uh, the, 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 a lot of these uh, seaports, uh, they, uh, they found itself uh, struggling to uh, deal uh, with the increasing uh, load uh, and uh, therefore uh, alternative solutions uh, had to be there to take off some of the burdens uh, off of this uh, seaport uh, and so some of the operations um, uh, from uh, of the seaport that uh, they were actually transferred to another location inland um, and um, and uh, this uh, and that location is uh, now being called dry port um, and and, uh, and the dry port uh, has uh, mainly railroad connections um, and um, dry port is uh, inland um, uh, but it is uh, connected to the seaport uh, and with various modes of uh, uh, transportation and so this is just a general background uh, on uh, this uh, term dry port and how it have uh, has uh, evolved in the history um, as a port and uh, you can see uh, the um, uh, the dry port uh, and its uh, main characteristics um, and uh, as it was pointed out the uh, international uh, uh, dry port um, uh, um, uh, it uh, refers uh, to um, an inland location as a logistics center connected to one or uh, more modes of transport uh, for handling, storage, and the regulatory inspection of goods moving in international trade and the execution of uh, applicable customs control and formalities. And so if you look at uh, this uh, picture here, uh, in this uh, inland port, dry port, uh, carries out similar functions uh, to the seaports um, 
and you can see here receipt and dispatch consolidation distribution storage and uh, processing and shipping documents and customs control and other control transshipment and uh, bonded warehousing and most so so all these uh, processes that happen in seaport uh, they also happen in dry port as well however uh, this uh, uh, dry port has to have a direct connection uh, with uh, the uh, seaport and uh, secondly um, and I'd like to highlight here one or more modes of uh, transport um, and uh, so railroad and road and um, uh, airline, uh, you know, at the uh, at, at the uh, center of this intersection of these uh, modes of transport uh, lies uh, in land port or dry port on oh, now. Next slide, please. Um, So, uh, what are the advantages of um, uh, building a dry port? Um, you know, what are the benefits? Uh, well, uh, and, uh, this serves as uh, the foundation for development of uh, free zones. Um, uh, and, uh, since uh, we have, uh, uh, since this um, uh, this dry port uh, connected uh, uh, directly to a seaport. Uh, um, is um, in the free zones, uh, then um, and all of these uh, uh, commodities, uh, raw materials brought into the um, into the zone uh, in the logistical center, uh, it will um, uh, it will be processed there, and then it will uh, benefit uh, some of the uh, tariff exemptions, and then it can also uh, seamlessly uh, be participating in the uh, movement of goods uh, and um, get cheaper and um, get cheaper um, uh, cheaper rates uh, in terms of uh, the, of the um, various um, uh, tariffs and also and it's cheaper to uh, ship it and uh, so uh, there are various uh, modalities uh, to establish a dry port it could be uh, privately owned it could be ppp or it would be it can be a uh, government owned uh, dry port um, and um, and this uh, dry port is also another key element to attract in foreign investment um, as I pointed out before, in 2016, uh, Mongolia uh, signed uh, the intergovernmental uh, dry port, and uh, we announced five ports as uh, international uh, dry port: Istanbul, Ulaanbaatar, Ulsanshan, Zamenhof. Um, they are um, the uh, um, uh, international uh, um, uh, dry port, and Chobosan. Um, in the future, uh, it could also be the the uh, next uh, um, international dry port, um, so the promising one. And so um, we um, announced the uh, dry ports, uh, but uh, why still so far there's not been any active operations um, and operationalization of the, the dry ports? Uh, well, um, uh, I think there are uh, several stages of work uh, that need to be undertaken uh, before we call these locations dry ports. And, um, and uh, so among Mongolia is facing some series of challenges, um, and so I will tell you in another slide uh, more about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, dry port will contribute to development of uh, uh, free zones, uh, economic free zones, and uh, also it uh, will um, uh, from, it will also um, uh, serve as the basis for the mass production of export uh, products, uh, and also it will help facilitate the uh, logistical processes um, and. Uh, mm, in, in Ulaanbaatar in particular, by establishing um, a dry port, um, uh, we can decentralize um, some of the congestion and overpopulation, overconcentration um, and challenges uh, in the Ulaanbaatar city, uh, on, which are serious uh, on issues here. And in Ulaanbaatar, there are uh, 11 separate um, on, on, on the terminals. Um, and um, as you know, there is a railroad uh, cutting through the city. And then um, along that um, railroad, we have the 11 separate uh, terminals. Um, and, and so, 
the goods uh, that are being exported or um, either um, um, imported, uh, and, and, and they go through um, uh, Ulaanbaatar city, and yet uh, they um, end up in eleven different terminals, um, and uh, and. And uh, so what that means is uh, also another thing is that uh, and all the um, all the goods that uh, uh, go out to the end customers in the rural areas uh, they always go through Ulaanbaatar city as well and uh, so so uh, intermodal uh, tripod uh, logistical center. Mm -hmm. Uh, therefore, is necessary, but outside of the city to counter these uh, aforementioned problems, um, and um, so that way we can also contribute to solving some of the uh, over concentration uh, and the congestion issues. Um, and in this intermodal uh, and uh, comprehensive uh, logistical center, uh, we can uh, we can um, uh, further. Uh, develop um, and develop also the processing industry and uh, then also uh, while um, at the same time uh, contributing to the uh, removal of uh, some of these uh, um, city specific urban problems um, and um, um, an Asian auto network uh, intergovernmental um, agreement and um, you know uh, so several uh, uh, logistics uh, arrangements have been uh, made available to Mongolia through various um, instruments and um, and uh, so um, I think uh, to materialize on these instruments, uh, the, the triports uh, can play an important role. Um, and, um, so, uh, by rail or by road, um, and the, the goods uh, can uh, go through the logistical center and then um, it be either imported and exported. Uh, and uh, also, one more advantage of this uh, triport is that, um, as you know, uh, e-commerce recently um, you know, the people are increasingly shopping online instead of physically going to shops uh, and that they just pre-order or order online and then uh, get their uh, uh, um, uh, purchases uh, delivered to their doorsteps. Um, and uh, so for e-commerce, um, there needs to be um, and, and this, uh, uh, this um, um, uh, big storage uh, uh, facilities and um, so logistical uh, center in a triport uh, will actually help um, uh, uh, help um, facilitate uh, the operations of uh, the um, of the e-commerce companies uh, by offering these uh, storage areas and, and uh, also connecting producers um, in. So if we um, uh, uh, make it uh, less time consuming uh, on, on, on the logistical side, uh, then uh, the uh, cost of the movement of goods, uh, transportation cost will also go down. Next slide. So tariff and uh, non-tariff barriers and um, international, uh, at the international level, uh, oh, what? So would be um, like this drive ports and so uh, first picture shows you the uh, traditional ports and uh, you can see that uh, from um, uh, seaport to the uh, to, to the cities and then in the middle we have this uh, small circus they are businesses um, and um, in the past um, and, and, and the uh, from the factory uh, goods would uh, go to the dry port and from the dry port um, to the so um, to the city um, you know and you can see that uh, only uh, in, they only travel by sea uh, from one city to another uh, going through some uh, seaports uh, but now here uh, we can see that uh, you know uh, we don't have to just uh, um, uh, you don't have to travel um, an, as much distance and so you can actually uh, concentrate in one place at uh, these logistical hubs and then go to the seaport and then uh, go to another city and um, 
Listen, so on, I think uh, this kind of scheme or structure will uh, bring about uh, the maximum possible benefits of a uh, dry port. Um, so if we have this kind of arrangement. Um, and uh, so as I pointed out uh, before, what do we need to do to establish uh, dry ports or develop uh, dry ports in Mongolia? We've already um, have joined uh, this uh, international instruments um, uh, um, and uh, the, from the government side, it has established established a working group uh, um, for this particular uh, matter and um, and uh, for the uh, UNESCO's intergovernmental uh, triport uh, agreement um, um, you know uh, China and Russia have joined uh, and uh, and so, but that's not enough, um, you know, that internationally there is a UN law code um, and this is a systemized uh, coding system. It's, um, so, uh, so this is basically from the UN, um, uh, 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 from the UN, they actually, um, um, they actually register uh, the location of the ports um, in their uh, system local. Um, and uh, so uh, registration uh, also covers, uh, you know, the mode of transport and uh, also in addition to uh, the location. And so we fill out the questionnaire and then submit it to uh, UN. And so, so as um, the, the, the so under the uh, European Economic Commission, uh, there is uh, this institution that uh, officially registers this UN law code. Um, and uh, so after we uh, get registered on the law code um, system, then we uh, inform that registration uh, to the uh, the to the to to the uh, various stakeholders uh, on um, uh, and then uh, this is uh, what the so-called shipping line notice and uh, so um, Costco and the other big uh, uh, companies uh, they can actually um, uh, after getting the uh, notice uh, then they can just uh, send the container straight to us um, without going through uh, without going through uh, transit countries um, you know unnecessary transit routes and uh, so in other words if you actually uh, use the low code uh, and um, uh, and, and uh, ship a uh, container from San Francisco to uh, Lambatter it will go through the shortest uh, possible um, direct route uh, from San Francisco uh, to Tianjin and then from Tianjin to Lambatter and then there will not be this unnecessary uh, customs procedures and declaration and clearance um, and uh, so just to give you an idea um, in Europe and uh, elsewhere uh, when we uh, travel there uh, you know you, you usually we usually just uh, uh, you know give our um, uh, luggage um, uh, uh, in a turn in our luggage um, even though we are uh, uh, you know transiting through uh, some other international uh, airports um, and so let's say I am flying to San Francisco then um, I just uh, um, you know just uh, turn in my luggage to be uh, and, you know the delivered at the San Francisco Francisco airport uh, from, from, for it to be handed over there um, and uh, uh, without having to you know um, um, uh, you know uh, get out of the um, uh, uh, border zone and then uh, you know uh, get my luggage and then send okay okay send send it um, Mm. And um, and then uh, turn in my luggage again, and um, so that that kind of process is not necessary, you know. And so just just like that, um, uh, the same concept applies, um, and um, and that's what we are you know, trying to do here. And uh, so um, for the countries with the access to sea it's not that difficult to um, um, build um, or establish um, dry ports um, why mm, because they have immense experience uh, with the seaport already and they have the ready-made regulatory framework and therefore they can they can just copy and paste them 
uh, with some tweaks here and there. Um, and then um, do the same uh, for triports. Um, but uh, for the landlocked countries, um, it's, uh, it, it's tough, uh, you know, and how do we create the right environment uh, for uh, dry ports to be established um, uh, in, uh, in, in such countries? And so uh, first is that uh, you need um, intergovernmental and bilateral uh, agreements. Um, um, and, uh, and then um, you have to um, also, um, you know, uh, arrive at detailed arrangements um, Next slide, please. In addition to the um, these international instruments, um, and so um, the first steps uh, we've taken um, to establish dry ports, uh, we are already signatory uh, to these international um, uh, legal instruments and agreements, and uh, we already have the working group uh, internally, and five uh, ports are declared um, uh, as um, uh, dry ports, um, international dry ports, and um, and um, and now uh, we are uh, trying to. Um, trying to um, get the UN logo, log um, and uh, so these five dry ports, uh, as you know, um, uh, do they exist physically? Yes, um, Alton, Botlock, and Zamiu, they are uh, economic free zones, and uh, they have um, they, they, they are intermodal, uh, they have intermodal uh, terminal, um, road and railroad, and um, and uh, um, in Ulaanbaatar city, um, uh, you know, we have the port, but it's inside in the center of the city. Um, but uh, the, these uh, terminals, however, uh, are not um, in one place, and uh, therefore we have to move it out of the city and then um, integrate them into a single um, uh, uh, logistical hub. Mm. Yes, but uh, to do that, of course, uh, um, we need investment. Uh, for example, for the um, for the various modes of transport uh, connection and uh, for the basic infrastructure, etc. And also. Um, uh, raising money and investment means that uh, we will have to find the right partners, local and international. And so we are uh, studying this uh, uh, whole um, uh, project and, uh, and soon uh, maybe we will uh, release uh, more news. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you to Han and um, and um, Uh, we have a uh, thirty percent or more um, uh, costs uh, uh, on the transport side, making the Mongolia's uh, uh, trade uh, uh, more expensive. Um, and um, so, Ganghoi actually uh, provided details about uh, the um, future of triports, and um, Mongolia joined. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the UNESCO uh, Triport Agreement, and um, as a result, we announced um, uh, uh, five of our ports as international triports. However, uh, physical investments are necessary, and um, and uh, process-wise, we also need to uh, get the um, uh, get the UN low code completed. And um, triport is uh, quite uh, uh, beneficial and uh, advantageous. Uh, why? Because uh, it uh, helps um, uh, develop uh, economic free and, and free economic zone, and it uh, and also it takes a uh, public private um, you know, partnership um, to develop uh, dry ports. And now, next we have um, another presentation on transport. Uh, we have CEO of uh, international think tank uh, LLDC, um, uh, Mr. Ot Bayer, and he will uh, his presentation topic is uh, Mongolia's export transportation. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, from the organizer side, um, we um, we were very happy to um, uh, receive your uh, invitation to be a part of this, um, and um, 
And today, um, you know, how to develop uh, and, and the trade and uh, how to uh, resolve the transportation issues, uh, you know, that, that is the area I wanted to bring your attention to. In export uh, transportation um, is the, uh, the presentation's name. Um, uh, from the international um, uh, uh, think tank uh, uh, LLDC, uh, we've been uh, exploring this uh, topic uh, for many years now. Um, uh, so um, I have five sections. First is uh, um, I wanted to give, uh, give you a definition of um, uh, landlo uh, landlocked country, you know, uh, landlocked uh, countries. Um, um, uh, and Mongolia, you know, uh, how Mongolia compares with the other uh, landlocked countries uh, and um, and uh, what are the differences um, in terms of the development the stages and uh, categories. And I will tell you about that. And uh, secondly, I am going to uh, cover on uh, co uh, co co cover the topic of the challenges uh, of uh, and, and, uh, transportation and export um, uh, for the landlocked countries. Is, um, and not only in Mongolia's uh, case, uh, but uh, also in the countries um, of uh, similar um, uh, landlocked countries, um, uh, that there are some cases and I will share you um, on the challenges and solutions. And then the third is, um, uh, uh, there it is more on the solution side, sorry, um, and, and a solution to these problems. And then fourth is, um, uh, you know, the recommendations uh, and that we give um, uh, to the enterprises and um, and the players in trade and export uh, sectors um, uh, based on our studies. And uh, at last, uh, I would uh, uh, like to uh, touch upon um, uh, uh, what kind of roles uh, international think tank uh, LLTC, our institution, plays um, in uh, helping the stakeholders. Um, so there are um, uh, 32 um, um, uh, and land uh, locked countries. Uh, there are two in Latin America and uh, in the Central Asia and Europe we have four. And um, as you can see here in the map, um, uh, there are about uh, half of them are in Africa. Mm. And in the next slide, um, you can see that uh, these uh, landlocked countries um, have uh, uh, 500 uh, and, and over 500 uh, million people. Um, that could, uh, this is the same. Uh, and the, the, the economic size is actually almost equal to um, EU. And so um, uh, for... Um, uh, we would like to uh, think that, you know, uh, when you bring all these uh, landlocked countries together, then these uh, it, it's a big, uh, big uh, economy. And most of these economies uh, are developing countries and uh, they have um, uh, 509 million mm, mm, uh, people. And uh, yet uh, they only account for 1.2% uh, percent of the total turnover in, across the world. And what that means is that uh, there is a lot of uh, underutilized problems in uh, Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan and uh, they actually um, account for 60% of the total exports uh, among all um, uh, landlocked countries and um, and as compared to the, uh, the countries with uh, seaports, uh, their uh, development level is um, at uh, about 20% lower and uh, <clears throat> and as uh, and the um, as, and as as the uh, facilitator has uh, pointed out, um, and also the previous speaker has pointed out, um, we have to spend uh, twice as much time uh, to uh, uh, the, to the, to ship our goods, and also it is uh, much uh, uh, more costlier on the transport side. Um, <clears throat> And uh, many countries, uh, they are at uh, different uh, stages of development and um, they have a different cultural background. However, if you look at their uh, problems, um, uh, they have some uh, common problems uh, as landlocked countries, uh, South American, Paraguay and um, in Asia, Mongolia. Um, we have a similar level of um, 
um, um, development challenges. Altogether, there are eight um, um, characteristics, common characteristics. Um, we have um, no ports, um, and uh, we also have uh, one <clears throat> we're dependent on <clears throat> uh, one or more big um, economies, uh, um, and also we have to go through at least one transit countries to get to the sea. And uh, also the population is uh, very small and uh, as a result, automatically the econ uh, economy is uh, small and um, also they are very much, uh, you know, uh, isolated uh, from the uh, big uh, international um, uh, economic hubs, uh, you know, for Kazakhstan, they have to travel uh, um, uh, about the 5,500 miles to get to Europe. Um, and uh, they are um, in Bhutan, uh, for example, they have uh, 600,000 people and uh, Mongolia has uh, 3.2 million uh, people. And uh, so the small economies um, and uh, small markets um, and um, so um, quite a dire picture compared to uh, the other parts of the world. And also the, uh, the, 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 most of these countries, uh, they are dependent on uh, mineral sector. Uh, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and uh, Turkmenistan, uh, they are very much uh, dependent on oil and um, mineral sector, uh, the, the, uh, which account for uh, the, 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 the biggest chunk of their exports and uh, and uh, so dependence, economic dependence, uh, we are dependent, for example, on uh, Russia and uh, China. So these are the common characteristics uh, for the landlocked countries uh, from the uh, from the challenge uh, challenge uh, perspective. Uh, and um, <coughs> so. Um, uh, uh, and what are the uh, best experiences uh, of the uh, most developed um, and uh, landlocked countries uh, and that we also look at um, you know mongolia is ranked at 192 um, in uh, human um, development index and uh, among the LLDs at uh, five and um, and uh, um, so uh, uh, we um, rank um, Mm. This industrial um, uh, performance index, um, uh, we rank at uh, uh, 10 uh, for that and, and among the LLDCs, but 107 internationally. And, uh, and go to the next slide. And uh, for foreign direct investment, foreign uh, trade um, um, related ranks are out there. And um, we have some numbers uh, that we collect. And uh, the most interesting. Um, thing is that, um, you know, uh, Mongolia. As compared to other. Um, uh, and landlocked countries, um, you know, uh, you know, how do we compare? And um, you know, we try to learn. And, and uh, so, um, and so, um, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, and Kazakhstan, and they are actually, um, um, and they are actually ahead of us. And um, and um, and uh, generally speaking, however, we are within the top five. Uh, so we're doing well within the uh, group of uh, in the landlocked countries. However, um, you know, international uh, uh, internationally, we are at about 120, 130 out of uh, 200 or so countries. And so that means we need to really do a lot of things um, uh, to uh, make progress and um, um, so um, uh, as was just uh, mentioned uh, before um, in the previous uh, slide uh, the uh, cost cost is higher uh, trade cost is higher for the landlocked countries um, so the most recent uh, data uh, at our um, I think tank uh, indicate um, the following uh, yellow is Mongolia and uh, gray is uh, landlocked countries and then uh, the uh, the middle two uh, bars are actually uh, transit countries and developing countries and so uh, the uh, key measurement here is um, the 40 ton container and uh, so um, uh, 
uh, here uh, on average, uh, 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 to export and uh, 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 um, uh, for Mongolia to export and uh, uh, import, um, it uh, 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 we actually um, um, pay more. Mm. And you can see here, um, the, the, for, compared to the transit countries, uh, um, uh, we pay we pay twice as much. Uh, you know, about two hundred two thousand six hundred uh, dollars for the import. Um, uh, we um, uh, also um, uh, pay uh, much more compared to um, you know um, overall developing countries. Um, and so export and import costs uh, are uh, much higher. And um, of course, uh, to be engaged in um, exports, uh, uh, you need to estimate uh, the distance and also the length of time for uh, your goods to uh, um, uh, reach uh, the destination. And um, for Mongolia, uh, we uh, spend about 44 days uh, to export um, to um, and, 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 and uh, and then uh, for the uh, landlocked countries, the average is forty one, and so um, and uh, and also it's uh, uh, for, uh, compared to developing and transit countries, uh, uh, we uh, spend uh, twice as much time on to export, uh, and uh, so uh, for, for, and it is uh, twenty one days versus uh, uh, forty four days, and. Um, and um, so again, um, uh, um, the picture is that uh, we are doing well compared uh, to the uh, landlocked countries. However, um, we spend more time uh, to export as compared to the uh, uh, as compared to the um, developing countries. Um, and uh, you see the red, the red over there, and that is Mongolia. And uh, after a, um, so how many days, uh, you know, um, does it take for the container to uh, arrive? So we see the average and Latin American average, European average, and world average, and uh, um, and uh, landlocked and uh, the least developed country average. And so you can see that uh, you know we spend, uh, uh, you know. Uh, more than any of these groups so to um, spend uh, uh, to to import um, uh, you know we spend more days uh, than any of these groups um, and uh, for the uh, uh, from the World Bank's uh, side uh, they have this uh, one index and uh, we stand at uh, 22 out of uh, 30 or so landlocked countries and um, and internationally we rank 143 uh, uh, for this uh, uh, logistics index and uh, then uh, Moldova and um, Bhutan and other uh, uh, landlocked countries uh, they are uh, stand um, at the top in terms of cross border, um, you know, uh, in the trade ease uh, because they are close to uh, the market and uh, therefore they spend less days uh, on transport. Um, and uh, the uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan and um, South Sudan and Chad, uh, uh, they are the worst performers um, on the list. Um, and according to the uh, Logistics Performance Center, uh, the Logistics uh, Index, uh, we uh, look at uh, the uh, transit uh, points. Uh, tra um, transit points are uh, um, quite important uh, because we have to uh, basically estimate how much time our goods are spent in the transit countries um, you know because it affects the trade and we rank at 130 and Rwanda is uh, at uh, 57 out of 189 Rwanda is the best uh, performer as land as land local countries and Afghanistan is at uh, 140 and um, We have to look at uh, transport-related um, infrastructure. Mm. Uh, in landlocked countries, uh, they don't have um, um, a good uh, 
transport uh, infrastructure. In Mongolia, uh, we have the same problem. However, in recent years, we have made some progress in terms of uh, developing some transport uh, uh, corridors. Um, and um, uh, as compared uh, to the other on landlocked countries, uh, we are on friendly terms with our neighbors and um, and we have a very active trade with our two neighbors. And so in that sense, uh, we have a, a brighter future um, uh, than others um, uh, for uh, export uh, potentials in Afghanistan and Burundi. Uh, they are at the bottom of these uh, rankings. Uh, why? Uh, well, uh, uh, not only do they uh, not have uh, access to seaport, um, and they also uh, uh, are at war with each other. They have um, um, unrest, etc. And that's why um, they don't have uh, as bright future as uh, Mongolia has. Uh, um, to develop export uh, internationally, what are the... Um, uh, a legal framework. Uh, well, um, the World Bank has uh, studied this topic and uh, so did we. And um, uh, our, uh, our, um, our uh, uh, country actually uh, look at uh, the connectivity and the integration of countries in the international trade. And, um, and, uh, and this uh, WTO's uh, the Trade Facilitation Agreement, um, TF, uh, TFA, is, uh, actually, uh, uh, is actually uh, the best possible instrument out there uh, to, uh, in, in, to to, to uh, develop export. And so um, Article 11 and other provisions really, uh, you know, um, obligate countries uh, to streamline um, the trade and uh, help each other. And um, uh, and so uh, you can look into this further. Um, as I have um, uh, yourself, uh, as I don't have much time. So if we uh, implement uh, um, this uh, 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 trade facilitation agreement, what uh, are the um, benefits uh, to the landlocked uh, countries? Uh, well, during the negotiation, uh, the general narrative was that um, uh, these landlocked countries, uh, if they um, join as a signatory and successfully implement uh, this um, uh, treaty, then uh, the landlocked countries, uh, they, uh, they will enjoy um, additional um, uh, an income generation and um, uh, so um, uh, the, the, the um, uh, middle income countries uh, they will uh, uh, have a uh, 15 percent or so a uh, 15 percent or so um, additional income and uh, uh, for a country like Mongolia and um, you know the trade turnover will uh, go up by 13.5 uh, percent uh, or so and uh, so I wanted to emphasize this um, this uh, uh, trade facilitation agreement um, um, because uh, and this really offers a lot of um, uh, um, lot of opportunities to unlock uh, the export and, and uh, next mm. uh, we also mm, look at uh, the customs clearance uh, time uh, release uh, mm, and uh, mm, and other metrics, um, um, the quality of infrastructure and the soft um, and hard infrastructure, you know, uh, we also look into um, uh, uh, into those uh, on the soft side we look at human resources for example and um, so what i'm trying to say is that uh, to really achieve uh, uh, better export outcomes uh, you know we not only invest in the uh, hard infrastructure but in the soft infrastructure such as the uh, customs efficiency um, and so a lot of studies actually indicate um, uh, this holds true and um, 
Um, so let's say that, um, you know, um, success is 100%, um, and then uh, the hard infrastructure investment uh, will only uh, account for 20% of the success and the remainder are of human resources and process and practice and, um, and experience uh, and also uh, the, uh, the, 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 the arrangements uh, that uh, we uh, reach um, uh, after negotiating with our um, uh, partners um, and uh, next slide uh, the uh, last part of my presentation so many challenges um, um, uh, what about now and so there are so many such um, and so many such um, and uh, issues and um, so what are the ways to um, uh, you know, tackle these uh, bottlenecks. Um, well, um, so um, very few uh, interesting uh, recommendations here uh, from our think tank. Uh, well, um, you know, we really need to develop uh, uh, the uh, export uh, like a sport, you know, um, like the success of what uh, does it uh, depend on. I, and, and so we need to diversify. Mm -hmm our sectors and products and um, uh, like sports and um, and also uh, uh, um, based on the landlocked countries experiences and other successful countries um, you know uh, the countries um, uh, uh, they actually start with uh, very niche areas you know niche products you know uh, that they can do the best uh, like nobody else um, uh, around the world and uh, so that's where you have to start them um, and second is that um, you have to improve uh, your um, uh, capability to um, get access to the sea and um, uh, we know that uh, you know um, we uh, uh, joined the intergovernmental uh, uh, drive port um, uh, this uh, dry port agreement. However, the thing is that uh, in uh, uh, from the Chinese side, apparently they haven't ratified, and uh, therefore uh, we only have access to Tianjin, but uh, not the Dalian, for example. Um, uh, and so I think uh, this intergovernmental arrangements are necessary, a mutual recognition, um, and also we need to diversify our trade partners. Um, like, so like in the case of Mongolia's third uh, neighbor act, uh, and uh, also from the, uh, the transit taper, uh, And there is uh, very little uh, international um, uh, le legitimate uh, um, tools uh, to really um, make profit from the uh, transport, uh, uh, transit uh, uh, transport. But rather, uh, you can actually just um, uh, use the auxiliary services to generate business and income. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, then um, uh, we also um, recommend that, uh, you know, think of uh, getting shipping line, etc. Uh, just like um, we have the flag that we rent, you know, um, and uh, economic zone development, uh, free zone uh, development uh, is another area uh, where we recommend uh, to look into. And... Uh, also, another recommendation is, um, you know, uh, you know, in, in, uh, the regional integration is quite important. Uh, so linkages and connectivity is uh, quite important, and uh, we need uh, policy support in this uh, from the government side. And now the role of the private sector. We know that uh, the role of the uh, private sector has uh, gone up uh, several uh, uh, notches. Uh, and um, uh, even from the UN, they uh, and, uh, acknowledge that uh, private without private sector, uh, we can't make any uh, meaningful uh, changes. And therefore, uh, we need policy incentives um, to get the private sector um, moving. And also, um, that there's a, a transit um, uh, and, and, and transportation and, uh, and transit shipping and uh, export uh, related the studies really need to um, carry it out to generate the data and evidence to inform decision making. 
in the next slide, uh, we have um, uh, so terminal, tripod, and um, and also this uh, free zone. Uh, you know, um, these items uh, are to be taken into account um, as recommended here, and also industrial parks and agro parks. Um, are uh, very much uh, essential uh, to uh, landlocked countries um, uh, because there are some uh, Kazakhstan's um, uh, successful cases. Uh, so Harso bomb uh, is a successful case. And also in uh, Bhutan, they, they have the dry port, the Bidumjing port, and, um, and it's, uh, the development is ongoing. And so you can contact our uh, think tank uh, and then uh, you can uh, get their experience. Uh, so, mm, and uh, so in, in on the legal side, um, let me just mention three major uh, instruments. The first is uh, WTO's uh, Trade Facilitation Agreement, um, because uh, 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 both our neighbors are members of the WTO and signatory to a trade facilitation agreement and, um, and also tier timing uh, uh, convention. This needs to be really studied and that, and that this tier uh, uh, um, uh, uh, convention uh, signatories, uh, you know, if we actually, uh, um, they have a lot of opportunities um, you know, to facilitate trade, and uh, so China is not. Uh, um, uh, uh, China has recently uh, joined the tier of um, convention, and um, so what that means is that uh, you know um, uh, this. Uh, um, Mm, uh, the, the signatories, uh, um, uh, freight forwarders and transport companies, uh, brokerages, um, uh, you know, um, vehicles and uh, ships, uh, they can actually uh, uh, travel freely um, on the territory of the signatories. Um, and, um, um, and, and of course, the Riport Agreement and uh, recently, um, uh, and Mongolia joined APTA, the Asia Pacific Trade Agreement. This is a huge, uh, uh, a huge uh, step forward, and so, um, so we need to study them further. How to make full use of them, and so um, ah, the last slide, um, one more please. Um, to um, um, promote export, um, you know, what would be the role of uh, LLDC um, I think tank? Uh, so just one slide here about this um, to um, arrive at the uh, sound policies, you need uh, prior uh, data generation and studies and evidences and, um, and good quality studies and data, uh, you know, brings about uh, the uh, most optimal uh, solutions. And uh, so um, also capacity building is necessary uh, for export promotions. And so all of these things we do. And uh, so we build um, capacity to training and, um, and other interventions. And also uh, we have some uh, geographical simulation software such as Elegin. And, um, and so then that we offer the use of this software um, um, you know, free. And um, so um, I would like to end my uh, presentation here. And if you have um, uh, any questions, uh, then you can turn to us. Thank you. Thank you to uh, the uh, um, uh, executive director um, not buyer uh, CEO and so we have to make uh, recommendations um, uh, from, from the panel the discussion and I think uh, you had some very good recommendations um, uh, to the viewers um, and so um, if we as a, a landlocked country, study the um, the other country's successes, then uh, we can overcome some of our challenges, such as uh, uh, you know uh, excessive transport cost and uh, an additional trade cost, etc. And um, 
um, and if we actually um, uh, use uh, that some of these international um, uh, instruments, uh, then uh, we can actually, um, you know, um, make a better export um, to the uh, to, uh, to through our neighbors and also to our neighbors and um, as our. Uh, um, Vice Minister has pointed out uh, we really need to, um, to think about uh, trade facilitation. Um, uh, trade facilitation, I think, is uh, uh, also all about uh, soft uh, infrastructure, right? Um, and uh, also, you mentioned about um, uh, diversifying the and uh, the, the uh, export products and um but um you know all of those things you know it's just uh, uh old narratives you know uh, we know um what to do however uh, you know uh, the question is how you know uh, what we need to do we know and uh, so and so we've been um talking about you know uh Export should start from, let's say, a C backdoor and product, for example. Mm. Mm. So uh, we know the issues, what they are, and then uh, we always ambitiously talk about various targets and objectives. But uh, now the question is, uh, you know, where do we start the, this uh, whole work from? You know, uh, what would be the first steps? Um, and uh, Altwire actually talked about human resources and um, and and the, the customs process, etc. It seems like we need to start from there, and so that is the topic of today's uh, um, uh, panel uh, discussion. And uh, so, um, so the policy linkage, coherences, and uh, also the structure, and you know, moving forward, what do we need to do? I think uh, we, we should really um and, and take uh, a, a big dive in terms of discussions you know um it seems like uh, we're not on the same page uh, you know uh even as uh, as a whole of a government um, and um, and uh, also um, also um, another uh, we will have another uh, main uh, presentation last presentation uh, from the uh, mongolian uh, mongolian national business school um, they actually um um uh, carried out a business climate uh, um, survey 2020 uh, together with the um, mnci and there are some very interesting findings and so i invite the uh, shout out Okay, hello. Um, uh, good uh, afternoon, everyone. And um, I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for uh, um, giving me this opportunity to uh, share our survey findings. Um, and uh, also, I would like to thank all the respondents um, to this survey. In other words, uh, the uh, enterprises and businesses and uh, uh, MNCCI members. Um, uh, in today's uh, um, presentation, the key um, topic is the export conditions and the challenges and um, uh, what um, and in what areas uh, we need to pay uh, more attention to as a priority uh, that I wanted to um, um, emphasize um, and in so in the previous um, sessions presentations uh, most of the presentations they were from non-private sectors but now this is uh, basically the voice from the private sector so just a few words about what the business climate uh, and survey is um, uh, we um, uh, and carry out this survey uh, to identify the uh, existing uh, conditions and landscape for private business uh, in, in Mongolia and uh, what are the to identify also to bottle uh, the main bottlenecks um, 
and uh, so um, we actually did the first survey in 2017 and now the second one and third will be in 2023 and uh, in June and May uh, we sent out the questionnaire and the collected the data and um, uh, and the, the, the NUM business schools and the MNCCI and TRAM, uh, three of us together, uh, we carried out uh, this uh, survey. Uh, there, uh, there were for more than 4,000 businesses, so quite a big sample size. Um, the, and the, these respondents uh, were not only uh, from the uh, Ulaanbaatar city, but also uh, from 21 provinces. Um, and uh, 100 and uh, um, uh, 1,111 were um, uh, foreign traders, and 150 uh, were um, uh, 50 or so were uh, exporters, um, and 151 to be exact. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you break them down um, uh, in that number, uh, the, the 30 were mining exporters and uh, the remaining 120 were non-mining exporters. Um, in the next um, uh, uh, um, slide, um, let me share with you um, the uh, key uh, findings. Um, there were five uh, areas uh, where we tried to um, uh, measure Mongolia's um, Mongolia's uh, business climate, and the score was uh, average score was uh, two point ninety one on the scale of uh, one to five, and um, one is uh, the, the, the the unsatisfactory, uh, two is poor, and three is average, and then four is uh, good, and five is excellent, and so just. Uh, so the, the, the more we uh, go close to five, then uh, that means uh, the, the better the um, uh, the views are and um, the assessment is. And our exporters and uh, ex and uh, so that's the general uh, score. And then I will share with you the uh, exporter specific. Uh, uh, findings as well, uh, their views. Um, now, mm -hmm. uh, we've looked at uh, six main uh, questions. Um, the first is um, uh, the government support and interventions um, and are they um, efficient? Are they responsive to the private sector needs? And the second, permit. Uh, and the permit and licensing processes uh, and the government services, are they good enough? Uh, and uh, then the third uh, question was, um, uh, uh, foreign trader, um, uh, traders um, uh, and their access to the private sector services. Uh, and uh, the, then uh, fourth, uh, we have um, the customs and uh, then um, and 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 then the transport and then also the um and, and so um, let's see in each of these um the first uh, expert promotion uh, government uh, support and interventions uh, how are they viewed by the private sector you can see the average over there 250 mm. and uh, so it means that uh, and it it's not so good the uh, government and non-government uh, um, organizations uh, international organizations um, uh, and their support is actually much higher uh, than the government support. And uh, then uh, moving forward, um, which uh, uh, kind of support um, uh, they think is most important? Um, well, 40% said, uh, said uh, we need government support uh, and intervention in one way or another, incentives. Um, and um, and uh, then 25% uh, next group said that uh, commercial banks need to uh, give more support. And uh, next is uh, export permit. Um, uh, export permit uh, in nutshell um, uh, are uh, basically the service quality in terms of, um, uh, you know, um, 
you know, running the, uh, the the permitting process. Um, and uh, two point, uh, it is uh, uh, just slightly over uh, uh, two. And uh, so if you look at uh, from the uh, various uh, factors, the time in terms of the time that uh, uh, it takes uh, for the permits to be issued, it is the, uh, it is the most uh, and um, um, this uh, unfavorable thing. And uh, so from the businesses, they send the signal that the permitting process is lengthy. And uh, then um, how many days uh, that they spend uh, to get their permit? 50% uh, uh, said less than two weeks and uh, the remainder 50% and said that um, um, more than two, 14 days. And so, here, um, the message is that we need to shorten the uh, permitting process um, and we need to digitize uh, so that uh, we can get rid of the uh, human influences. Um, and the next is uh, the uh, business organizations, uh, private sector services uh, to the uh, foreign traders. And um, the average was about 2.6 and um, just like uh, the, the, the previous area. And um, so business, uh, you know, um, uh, finance, uh, access, borrowing opportunities are uh, very little and then uh, and advisory services and then after that uh, insurance, uh, credit insurance and then uh, transport, uh, you know, forwarders, uh, freight forwarders, uh, they actually received a score above uh, uh, three. Uh, points uh, and, uh, and so uh, that this is uh, this was actually uh, the only indicator where uh, that we had a score above three and uh, so as market I think uh, maybe it, uh, is, um, it's because the, uh, the the market is very small. And next is um, local uh, transport um, and domestic transport. Uh, and so we looked at uh, the local business environment and therefore we didn't ask uh, a lot about the, uh, the transport, about uh, the exporting. And so generally speaking, uh, the logistics assessment um, and the 2.82 is the the gen the average score and what that means is that um, um and, you know the assessment uh, in general assessment is average um, and um, so uh, we actually asked them uh, in, uh, we asked them uh, you know, whether it has improved, uh, you know, compared to the previous years. And um, so um, actually 12% uh, um, um, more respondents said that uh, actually this is the area where they are seeing the biggest progress. Um, uh, in other words, progress in uh, um, domestic transport uh, connectivity. And um, next is customs clearance. Um, and, um, uh, it, the customs average score was uh, 2.75 um, and, um, uh, and uh, generally speaking, quality of service is uh, not uh, up to the standard. Uh, and, um, uh, and down here, we looked at uh, quality and uh, also the uh, cost, uh, cost and time uh, by uh, port. Uh, and Boyndo actually received the highest score. And then in terms of the costs, um, um, uh, the uh, ports outside, uh, uh, those not listed here, they are more costly. And um, and also uh, in Alton uh, they actually um, uh, are the, sl the, the, the slowest, uh, uh, you know, processing, customs processing um, port. And, So the uh, customs, uh, we've asked also about, uh, you know, the uh, foreign countries' uh, customs, uh, how complicated they are, and um, and so this is to inform the government, uh, you know, about the need to, uh, you know, negotiate a deal um, 
with uh, the uh, trade partners. And uh, most of the uh, respondents said that uh, non-tariff barrier is the biggest barrier. And uh, so what that means is that, um, you know, our uh, products, they're not uh, meeting the, uh, the the standards and uh, as in SPS requirements, etc. cetera. And um, uh, also um, about the border um, with the two neighbors, um, uh, the traders actually uh, complained about uh, the, how lengthy it is uh, for the um, how lengthy it is uh, for the goods to be processed and released to the other side. Um, um, and uh, as compared to China, I think uh, and, and they were 0.5 percent um, less in terms of the uh, score it received and. Um, also, uh, we've uh, clarified uh, the respondents about uh, the uh, use of uh, uh, the, the free trade agreements, and um, and um, uh, so uh, seventeen and said they use a GSP plus, and uh, and and more actually said that they use uh, EPA. And uh, in the past uh, month, there was uh, an EU Expo EU Day, and um, and about uh, seventy or so um, uh, entities. These enterprises in Mongolia uh, are on the GSP system um, officially, and um, and uh, so what that means is that um, business environment. Um, uh, the, the the business climate uh, for the. Um, uh, for the export, um, uh, here is a 2.63 um, uh, out of uh, five. And uh, so the previous one, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the survey findings was, uh, was a different score, right? But in this area, it was uh, in the export area, it was a 2.6. And now, We've asked specifically what are the biggest challenge uh, that they have uh, in exporting, and then they said that uh, um, uh, they said that um, uh, the biggest challenge is uh, volatility in the in the exchange rate, and uh, I think the, uh, the the average score was uh, two point thirty six, um, uh, and um, also. Um, and the access to foreign trade financing uh, is not uh, satisfactory. These are the two biggest problems, and uh, and uh, the the remaining four um, items listed here, um, and they can be um, uh, resolved uh, by the, uh, the by the companies themselves. So it has to do with um, the competitiveness of uh, the uh, companies. Um, and so they say that uh, they find it difficult to uh, secure human resources and they don't know how to, uh, you know, uh, draft the contract uh, when they find a partner and uh, the market studies are not available. And uh, also the fourth is uh, finding a partner is another challenge. Um, yeah. And in on the financing side, uh, we have a uh, um, we had a follow up uh, question, and um, so which financing um, issues that they uh, that they find it hard um, uh, to um, access? And they said that this is the uh, SME fund and the other types of um, uh, government sources. And the next is international banks, you know, um, and their products are not good. And then third is uh, uh, this uh, uh, credit insurance, um, lack of credit insurance um, services. These foreign traders, um, you know, by sector, you know, and the, the answer, uh, do they vary? Well, um, there are some interesting um, uh, conclusions that we can arrive here. Um, first of all, um, uh, foreign trade financing accessibility um, 
this is the top uh, issue uh, for the processing uh, sector enterprises um, and uh, then uh, for the mining exporters and foreign traders, um, uh, they actually say that um, the, the exchange rate is not a big issue, maybe because uh, they earn their income in hard currencies. Um, and uh, in terms of um, competition and um, and, and uh, uh, contracting processes, uh, the mining companies, they said that, you know, the contract, uh, uh, contract uh, deal uh, process is actually the biggest challenge uh, for the you know, mining companies. So it's se sector specific challenges. Um, and now, uh, what are the actionable measures uh, that the exporters want? Um, well, before um, going into that uh, uh, issue, um, let me then, before that, um, uh, let me share with you the answers on the uh, most helpful um, uh, recent changes. Well, uh, at the top, we have uh, the uh, digitization of the government services, uh, which turned out to be the most favorable uh, outcome. And secondly, uh, training and exports and uh, sending the uh, companies to exports. And so these were the uh, biggest help. Um, uh, and now next, uh, you know, from the government side, what would they expect, uh, you know, what do the private sector expect the government to do? Mm. Well, uh, these, uh, on the, the, uh, these were the general uh, uh, answers. First, uh, they want a better tax regime. And second, uh, they want um, uh, business, uh, better business borrowing opportunities. And uh, third is uh, the train uh, the uh, skilled workforce and reducing bribery and corruption um, and uh, facilitate and simplify the processes. And so this is actually business climate improvement measures. Um, and now in the last slide, um, mm -hmm. uh, specifically to promote uh, what do they uh, do the respondents want them. Um, 160 exporters um, out of them, that uh, 72 percent that uh, they wanted better access to finance, 63 uh, percent that they wanted um, marketing advice, um, and uh, and and the third uh, training and uh, information and. Uh, and then um, uh, the, the, the support to help them comply with uh, international standards. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, at last, the insurance credit accessibility uh, needs to be expanded. And so, okay, just to sum it up, mm -hmm. business climate for uh, specific to the uh, exporters uh, is uh, not so good and it's tough. Um, out there, and uh, and uh, and you can see uh, what do the exporters uh, want uh, the government and other stakeholders to do. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, and thank you very much uh, for, for to um, um, Professor Sharav. And um, as uh, Odd Bayer, previous speaker, uh, has pointed out, um, uh, evidence based uh, uh, policy makings are, are the best. Uh, um, uh, um, policies uh, and uh, so we really need to make sure that all these uh, uh, data and evidences generated uh, from um, uh, surveys like uh, um, uh, uh, like from Mr. Sharav and the MSCCI um, you know, we need to make sure that uh, they are used in the uh, policy makers um, uh, uh, work and uh, so a lot of the studies and surveys that uh, they also send a similar um, uh, message which is that uh, enterprises that uh, they have very little borrowing opportunities and and, uh, and they say that uh, 
No, I will say absolutely no to um, a commercial loan from Mongolian commercial banks because it's, uh, the interest rates are excessive um, to the point that um, it would make them go bankrupt. Um, they say that uh, they uh, instead uh, look out for uh, the concession loan. Um, for example, uh, there is a um, uh, Japan government funded um, funded uh, you know the SME loan uh, and uh, I think uh, there was one business that was waiting for the third um, uh, phase of this uh, Japan's SME uh, funding program and second is um, uh, our second biggest uh, um, challenge is uh, the um, standard and uh, and and uh, quality assurance um, and and SPS requirements and that's why we have uh, two sessions on this specific topic um, and also in the priority um, we uh, we identify priority uh, sectors and um, and uh, the thing is that, however, uh, there is a, you know, a lack of supply of skilled workers in this uh, um, priority expert and uh, business sectors. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. so we've talked about logistics issues and um, you know, that logistics. Um, uh, so, in so in that sense, uh, trade facilitation and export promotion needs to be very comprehensive, and it should touch upon a lot of issues: um, you know, logistics, human resources, access to finance, etc. And um, uh, also, businesses they say that uh, that they want a better capacity; they want to make themselves more competitive. Um, and so, from the Ministry of Finance side, uh, we uh, do realize that um, uh, there is uh, no structure or a unit um, in the government, uh, for, you know, in the government uh, to uh, provide, uh, you know support specifically to a private sector. And the thing is that um, also um, is that, uh, the, you know, uh, we open up a lot of um, opportunities to the businesses, uh, such as, um, uh, you know, uh, by joining various uh, regional um, agreements such as APTA and, um, and, and, and also by, um, you know, uh, helping access to, yes, to GSP plus of EU, but uh, they've not been uh, the, uh, able to make use of these uh, new opportunities, the private sector players. Um, and also in, uh, in, in, in Korea, they have Kotra and uh, in Japan, they have uh, Jetra, etc. This, uh, this kind of institutions are necessary in Mongolia to help um, uh, help the uh, private sector to make uh, good use of these uh, instruments, etc. And uh, now, uh, move. Let's move on to the free discussion. And uh, my uh, next question is uh, very much related to the content of all previous uh, presentations. Um, this uh, expert promotion. Uh, policy promotion and reforms uh, can uh, bring about the medium term benefits and it takes a lot of political willpower and it takes a lot of time and efforts. Um, but the uh, long journey starts uh, with uh, small steps. Um, and so in that sense, you know, as a country, what have we done right? And uh, uh, in the past and and also uh, name two policy actions um, that we need to take first uh, you know from today onwards so who will answer okay sme agency gilsaya okay um Thank you very much. Uh, I am very happy to be um, on this uh, uh, panelist's uh, um, list. And uh, mm, there was a lot of new interesting findings uh, from the uh, uh, 
speeches um, uh, here and uh, from the uh, monthly and from SME, uh, we've, um, uh, uh, we've, we've uh, done a lot of work. Um, and of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the bottom up, you know, we really need to make sure that, uh, you know, um, uh, the animals are healthy. And uh, so we had uh, um, animal genetic uh, um, a resource uh, uh, law and animal health law. And then and most recently, uh, 2018 SME uh, law, um, you know, all of those um, uh, laws and regulations uh, were um, adopted, and um, and so uh, we worked on the drafting and uh, and according to the SME um, law, um, uh, there are provisions uh, that will allow uh, various subsidies to the exporters of um, uh, products of animal origin or plant origin agri products, and uh, so uh, if you actually. Soon, uh, we are currently working on the secondary regulations um, according to this uh, law um, on how to provide subsidies to the businesses if they've actually um, exported uh, agricultural uh, products. Um, and now about the uh, immediate actions. Uh, first is that uh, we don't have trade law. And the trade law has been in the making for a long time. And now uh, we need to work on the drafting and uh, get the uh, trade law adopted. Um, and uh, also, secondly, uh, there is a lot of unmet demand uh, for concessional loans um, for the uh, SME um, uh, in the areas of um, uh, financing um, uh, uh, we have uh, some level of uh, sources uh, that we can allocate, and then every year we prioritize uh, uh, the, the reprioritize uh, the sector. For this year, uh, we uh, have e-commerce and uh, um, uh, uh, as a, a new. Um, So uh, some um, uh, some also manufacturing uh, light industry manufacturing businesses uh, are on the list as well uh, for the concessional loan um, uh, priority receivers um, and. Um, so our SME fund SME uh, agency and uh, our SME. Um, uh, SME um, uh, Mafali is actually at the forefront of uh, promoting export and um, so um, together with uh, the uh, MNCCI and uh, with the other um, um, research institutions, uh, we'd be happy to work with you uh, to, uh, towards uh, promoting export. Thank you, Giritsaya. So, uh, and, and you pointed out uh, the new laws and the uh, legislative steps uh, we've taken um, as a success on um, SME law and uh, an animal genetic uh, resource law and animal health law. Uh, and uh, as, a, as a necessary immediate step, you pointed out uh, the trade law. Uh, um, the fact that it needs to be adopted now, Ho Long, uh, from the MNCCI. Okay, uh, hello. I am very happy to be uh, uh, to be a part of this uh, event, and I have received uh, a lot of rich information. And uh, uh, from uh, I agree uh, with the uh, with, uh, with with the SME agency in terms of our. Um, uh, answer to your question, mm -hmm. to name um, two As Outfire has pointed out, um, we uh, export more minerals than any other uh, uh, um, products, and uh, we also have a small economy and market, and uh, therefore, uh, um, 
the fact that Mongolia joined the multilateral and bilateral agreement uh, is an advantage. Now we need to enforce those very well. Uh, in particular, uh, the trade facilitation agreement and also the um, uh, dry port agreement um, 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 from UNESCAP. We need to work towards uh, really getting the benefit under the, under these instruments uh, as a signatory. And uh, also, uh, secondly, uh, we need to really um, open up the opportunities, uh, especially in terms of um, uh, you know market access. Um, in particular, uh, from twenty twenty one onwards, um, uh, you know the APTA. Um, allows uh, an a range of opportunities, um, new opportunities, and also um, EPA, um, this economic partnership agreement between Japan and Mongolia. Now, I think it really gave some uh, some benefits, um, you know, because uh, uh, the Mongolian producers and local brands, uh, they really, uh, you know, tested themselves in terms of uh, meeting the uh, the non and this is standards, uh, standards and quality assurance requirements. Uh, so this was a learning process. Um, uh, and so that's about it. Okay. So for the right step um, from your answer, um, what I gather is that um, uh, WTO's um, uh, agreements and treaties and um, APTA and um, uh, and also other free trade agreements, um, we have them now, and which is good. And uh, but uh, uh, moving forward, um, we really need to improve on the efficiency and uh, and and the quality um, of uh, private business uh, operations, right? And yeah, okay. Let me try to. Focus on you know what were the good steps we've taken and uh, and uh, the good outcomes we've achieved. Well, we've been in the open market for thirty years and we have some level of experience already. And uh, but uh, when we get out of Mongolia in this uh, competitive international market, you know what uh, you know what are the challenges? You know uh, we know that at least we know what are the issues that we face um, and secondly in the past uh, you know our businesses they tend to be um, uh, solo players uh, and that was their preference but now uh, the, 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 they realize that uh, we are very small, um, you know, uh, too small to be competing in the international market. And as a result, they are, uh, they all agree that, okay, let's, uh, let's create a cluster and let's compete uh, uh, together um, against other players uh, in the international markets. And so, that was a, a good uh, step forward. Um, and uh, also another um, uh, good, the positive uh, um, change is that uh, um, there's some training and there's some, uh, you know, for donor funded projects and uh, the, 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 they provide the advisory services. And now uh, the MFA actually opens up the market access uh, through various negotiations with the uh, foreign uh, and, and the traders and, and um, uh, trading countries. Uh, but uh, now, um, they always say that um, investment promotion agency is necessary um, so that it can contribute uh, to the uh, to the expert promotion. You know, one that really listens to the uh, private sector and then takes uh, concrete actions to help. At the private sector. And secondly, I believe that um, the, the trade law, we don't have that and we do need it. Yes, we do. Um, and the third is that uh, access to finance. Um, uh, the, there are some uh, capital for borrowing uh, for, uh, for, for, for the credit purposes. However, 
the bankability of uh, of the of, of of the businesses is also in another issue, and um, and also um, maybe to uh, increase access uh, to capital, uh, maybe we can reallocate uh, the tax m money uh, from the mining to other sectors. Okay, Sharab Dirch was quite clear about our achievements and uh, the next step forward. Um, uh, okay, thank you very much. And uh, I uh, very much agree with all the uh, speakers uh, here. Um, to, to engage in, in, in international trade, uh, we uh, start out with the, the W2As, uh, the TEOs, the GATS, and, uh, and, and TFA, and, uh, and uh, mm, there are so many treaties that Mongolia joined, uh, you know, but uh, that doesn't mean we've uh, resolved all of our problems, um, because um, all of those international treaties need to be turned into local legislation. And in other words, uh, local domestic regulatory framework needs to be harmonized um, with these international treaties. Um, so uh, signatories, uh, they need to enforce uh, these international um, uh, treaties. Uh, and But to do that, uh, we need to localize uh, the content of those uh, treaties. There needs to be sanctions um, on the violation uh, of uh, these international treaties, um, uh, but uh, the enforcement uh, of the sanctions that uh, they can only be achievable if they uh, the sanction provisions are reflected in the Mongolian laws. Um, and uh, yeah. next, um, we have a lot of uh, donor funded uh, on, on you know, projects like tram and uh, UN projects, and even at our um, ministry, we have some level of mandate um, uh, to uh, help uh, and exporters. And but uh, it needs to be very well regulated uh, again by the uh, laws. And, and you know, <clears throat> and third is that um, let's uh, look at uh, the producers, um, and when we. So we have to ask ourselves as private businesses, have we actually made the attempts to export ourselves? We wait for the foreign products to arrive uh, into our country. Um, for the mining products, uh, um, you know, okay, we are exporting, but for the wood and cashmere you know, products, uh, from what I see, even though we produce a lot of the raw commodities uh, and... Um, uh, and also to some level, um, and, and, and to some level we process those products, but um, and these end products are only sold in Mongolia and uh, a lot of these uh, businesses, uh, uh, they've never taken the initiative to join to export uh, together, if not alone. And, um, our producers, uh, our um, um, uh, researcher actually from the university has pointed out that uh, recently there is a tendency to uh, to uh, join a cluster, and um, and I think uh, this uh, this this is good, and, and I think we really need uh, you know kind of like an integrated approach to joining forces and uh, making attempts to. At, to export, really. So you said that the trade uh, law needs to be there, I uh, understand, and also the regulations uh, need to be reflective of the international treaties. Uh, okay, and thank you very much. And uh, uh, so um, we can actually share your study on our portal. And uh, please consider that request. And mm, so mm, for myself, um, for 30 years, uh, we've been doing uh, I, whatever it took. And uh, of course, there were mistakes and lessons and achievements. And so I think we've been um, on the learning curve. And um, but now 
moving forward uh, uh, we need to focus on the future not uh, in the past of course we need to assess our past uh, to not to repeat uh, the the mistakes in the future but uh, the thing is that um, um, you know, uh, I used to be in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but now in, uh, I'm in the international think tank. And so as I get out of uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, as I changed my job, I just uh, realized one thing, you know, um, so at the end of every speech uh, in this kind of um, 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 events, uh, you know, there's this uh, very, uh, you know, um, common message, which is that um, coordination of uh, the uh, ministries and the agencies. And so a lot of the donors, for example, and the IFI saw that they claim that, that they've made a lot of investments. However, uh, the investments compromised. Why? Because there was a lack of coordination and cooperation between the ministries. Um, and so uh, our uh, uh, lack of coordination and unwillingness to work with each other as government institutions and having institutional ambitions, uh, they really keep us uh, from achieving uh, concrete results. Um, and uh, of course, um, uh, uh, th th we need to listen to the private sector um, stakeholders and uh, really uh, try to have uh, an empathy for them and try to simplify and facilitate uh, these um, challenges, uh, solving th these uh, challenges um, um, that we can do. But um, so what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, I think we need to do a lot of uh, homework, uh, you know, without waiting for uh, the adoption of uh, new laws. Um, and we know that uh, under the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, we have uh, this uh, dry port working group. Um, uh, and yet uh, and the, 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 the working group has been very slow. And I used to be a member of this uh, working group. Um, and I know that uh, we really need to ramp up our uh, level of, um, you know, proactiveness. And, and uh, so um, when we, um, uh, uh, so um, our, uh, all the export and the import uh, related uh, stakeholders, uh, they are on this uh, working group and committee as well. And they said, no, no, no. so when we started out, um, you know, we didn't even know our committee didn't even know um, uh, whether we had uh, the authority and legal power to uh, make uh, valid and enforceable decisions. Um, and uh, so, um, and, 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 and the street facilitation committee. Yeah. And uh, so my personal opinion, opinion on, the, on the law. And uh, so uh, uh, the, we might actually risk violating a lot of the uh, free trade uh, uh, principles uh, by regulating. Um, you know, so we need to get uh, the regulations right. So we need the law, but uh, but the bad law is uh, counterproductive, um, and and so we really need to reflect uh, who will do what uh, quite um, clearly. And um, so uh, in the uh, in the trade promotion committee, we, what I observed is that you know there were some good ideas, but uh, they didn't know whether the uh, the the decisions from the committee, you know, how it will be followed up and who will be responsible for its um, its implementation, and uh, so that discouraged the level of uh, enthusiasm, and also. Um, 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 we have a portal. And, uh, and uh, we have this uh, simple online portal and uh, this uh, uh, and using this uh, portal, uh, you know, all the necessary regulatory regulatory uh, data and informations are posted there uh, between the country, uh, between the 
uh, countries and between the agencies. And so it's actually quite a simple, uh, uh, you know, platform, but it can be actually used by various agencies to improve their coordination. Simple, but uh, we can, uh, not, it, it can be a huge step towards uh, simplifying and facilitating trade. And so if there is a, a um uh, if there is a let's say a a, a prospective uh, meat exporter then he would actually have to uh, learn about uh, the sbs requirements on the, uh, the from from the chinese side and uh, the uh, the quarantine requirements and that thing can be placed there and then a regular uh, trader can learn about this um, Okay, thank you very much to Odd Bayer. Uh, some very interesting and uh, valuable ideas. Um, a trade facilitation is actually our uh, um, ministry's um, uh, ministry's responsibility, and uh, also um, uh, in particular our department. And we actually serve as a secretariat to the committee, and um, and there are two councils as well. Um, um, uh, the headed by the ministry and, and uh, the, the uh, councils actually are there to uh, ensure coordination between the line ministries and, um, uh, and, and agencies and uh, these councils should be more active and um, and uh, so I agree with you that on, on that point and uh, about the portal. You probably uh, heard about it and so we've uh, launched uh, an, a, a portal. Um, uh, 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 just two days ago, and uh, and um, uh, but uh, the thing is that it is important to keep uh, that these uh, um, uh, uh, these uh, platforms alive. You know that the uh, launch can be uh, grandiose, uh, and uh, but uh, it needs to be maintained, uh, and um, so I think uh, uh, um, oh, I've got an. Every participant uh, pointed out uh, the need for adoption of uh, the foreign uh, 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 need for the trade law, and but uh, we need to be uh, uh, treading there carefully, uh, not to uh, misregulate, uh, and uh, and also there needs to be uh, an you know trade promotion agency, um, and also another uh, key point was uh, you know. Um, uh, enforcing the international treaties Mongolia is a, a signatory to, especially through um, harmonization uh, with the uh, local law uh, and regulations. And, and so I think uh, uh, as for myself, I can say that, um, you know, it was a quite a good discussion. A lot of the ideas that I had uh, uh, within me uh, really resonated with yours as well. And so I would like to thank you uh, for and wish you all the best.